Now, the main structure used for search for information retrieval is the inverted index. Now, um, what is the inverted index? Again, it has two different structures within it. First, it's a dictionary which contains all the words that, um, well, that are present in our collection. And the dictionary, what, what does it have? It, uh, it has, again, some meta information, but not about documents, about terms. So the total number of documents containing the term, uh, where the inverted list is located uh, in the physical storage and some other metadata about term. So whatever you can think of about a term, you can put it in a dictionary. So again, you separate meta information about terms from the real inverted list where the term is linked to documents where it occurs. And the natural um, way of storing this information is of course something like B plus tree, B tree or hash table. So in your assignment, for example, you may think about it and you may have two different structures. One is a dictionary of all the terms and another is the actual inverted list uh, that, or yeah, list of inverted lists that we are going to discuss right now. So let's see, uh, let's take a very, very easy example. So let's say we have four documents, actually these are four sentences from Wikipedia, and we consider them as four documents about tropical fish. Now, what we do to create a, an inverted index, first we list all the words, and these words are again stored in a dictionary. So something like a hash table or a B tree. Uh, you see that uh, no store word removal was done, no stemming, that's fine. That was just an engineering decision of somebody who built this index. Anyway, so we start with uh, listing all the words that we have, and that's our dictionary. And then for every word, we see uh, what are the documents that it occurs in. So apparently and occurs in only the first document. And indeed, if we scan this, for documents, we will see that and is only here, and so on and so forth. And then the fish occurs in four documents, tropical in three, and that's the simplest inverted index you can build. And each entry in this index, each entry here or here, it is called an inverted list. Uh, if you did uh, any information retrieval course before, you saw this structure for sure. Now, uh, this structure is nice, but clearly it only says where the word occurs, in, in which document it occurs. And that is not helpful to rank documents because uh, we can only say that, let's say the phrase tropical fish occurs in documents one to three, but which of these documents is better out of three, we can't say. So we need some more information and the natural information that we can store in the inverted uh, index for each inverted list is the term frequency. So we not only store the document ID where the word occurs, but also how many times the word occurs there. So fish occurs two times in document one, three times in document two, two times in document three, two times in document four. So now if, you, if we are to uh, rank these documents, we could, for example, go for a term frequency here and uh, rank document um, two higher than uh, other three documents. Sorry, I have some background noises. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so now we can do a bit more of, of a ranking, but that's not the only information we can store in index. We can also go with positions. So again, it's not only the document where the word occurs, but it's only on what position it occurs. So position two, position four in document one, position seven, 18, 23 in document two, and so on and so forth. So these positions, uh, by the way, may be helpful to deal with phrases. So in the previous set of videos, we talked about extracting phrases from text. So now you can see that if, for example, in document, uh, let's see. Um, so if we want to see whether tropical fish is a phrase, we see that in document one, tropical occurs in position one and fish occurs in position two. So actually they occur uh, close to each other, so next to each other, actually. So that might be a phrase. Now, um, in reality, you may want to store different types of information at once for every term. So let's say we have a term, a dictionary entry for, for a term T, 
And then we store both document IDs. So that means the term T occurs in documents one, three, four, five. We term, uh, store weights, which could be term frequencies, uh, once in document one, twice in document three, and so on. We can uh, store positions. Um, so I guess this is just, uh, no, this is actually, sorry, this is term frequency. So uh, this is one, two, occurs once in document four. These are positions. So since um, in document three, the term occurs two times, there are two positions, two and seven. And weights, okay, weights is something that you can um, define yourself. We will talk about ranking. And when we talk about ranking, this notion of weights will be clear. For example, BM25 can be a weight or TFIDF can be a weight. So that's something that you can uh, define yourself. But document IDs, term frequencies and positions we've seen on previous slides. Uh, now, before I conclude this part of, of the video, I'd like to you to have a clear distinction between what should be stored in an inverted index or inverted list and what shouldn't be. The only thing that you store in an inverted index is something that describes a pair, a document and a term. So term frequency of a term, I don't know, uh, Amsterdam in a web page about the University of Amsterdam. Or um, an idea of a document that talks about Amsterdam. So something that uh, relates both to the term and to the document. Whatever refers to the term only, let's say the number of documents where this term occurs should go into the vocabulary. Whatever describes the document itself without any term, let's say document length, language, um, I don't know, the number of clicks should go into the page attribute file. And only the things that uh, describe terms and documents in relation to each other should go into an inverted list. For example, if we talk about uh, semi-structured documents, uh, for example, in the web, uh, HTML pages may have a title and a body. And then the indication where a term occurs, whether in a title or in a body, it really describes the relation between the term and the document. And that can be put in an inverted index. So whatever describes uh, the two can be put, whatever describes just one of them, either a term or a document should be put in some other structures. So uh, to summarize in general, inverted lists uh, may contain document IDs, uh, term frequencies, term positions, and some additional weights that we'll uh, discuss a bit later. 